Hello, everybody. We are Wesley and Stacy Campbell of Shiloh Global, and we are starting a brand new series, What the Spirit is Saying to the Church. And who's our guest today, Stacy? Today, we have one of our personal favorites, Mike Bickle, and he is going to be giving a biblical talk about what the Spirit is saying in the end times. But before we do that, I just want to say, go to our website. You see it right there. And uh, we have a number of things available, especially the Shiloh Company Mentorship that's led by Stacy. And it's if you go to www.wesleystacycampbell.com, you'll be able to see that. And also, we have a brand new app, a Shiloh Global app. And you just go to your app store. And finally, a whole bunch of recordings. Mike Bickle featuring Mike Bickle praying the Bible. Three Mike Bickle um, CDs, audio recordings, etc. cetera. So, um, so that's it. Uh, go to show me. Um, so we, you can go there and check that stuff out and it'll be awesome. So Stacy, about Mike. Okay. Now Mike Bickle is the founder of the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, which has been going now for decades, night and day, 24 seven prayer. On. And I remember being there in the little mobile home uh, when they started it in a, the don't despise the day of small beginnings, because now the sound of prayer is filling the Come earth, on. filling the bowls in heaven and filling the earth. And we just love Mike Bickle and Wesley, um, Tell us, uh, introduce Mike Bickle about his Bible knowledge. Wow. Years and years ago, in the 80s, 1988, I heard there was a man on earth that prayed three to five hours a day. I went, unbelievable. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine it. And the Lord had rebuked me that I need to learn to pray. So three of us from Canada flew to Kansas City to the What the Spirit, no, it was called Passion for Jesus, Easter Conference, 1989. And uh, we fell in love with Mike and um, the man's a man of prayer. He's a man of the Bible and the word. So we've been running together for 30 years. And uh, by the way, if you missed it, we've just aired his, his um, conversion story on January 5th. We just aired it a couple days ago. And that is with Charisma Podcast Network. You can go on Charisma Podcast Network and hear me interviewing Mike on how he found Jesus so many years ago. So um, Stacy, just before we bring Mike on, what is the purpose of what the Spirit is saying for the end times, the new era? You know, we are in a whole new era. And for a long time, the Lord has been speaking to me. I've been preaching it everywhere I went, that we are about to move into something that we've never seen before. And uh, God said that we wouldn't be able to go to the past to get there, that we had to create new containers for the times. And so we wanted to create this podcast with a number of apostolic and prophetic leaders from today to help equip you get Get ready for the new era. And we wanted to start with Mike Bickle because of his love for the word of God, his deep understanding of the end times that we're moving increasingly into. And we have notes for this particular um, session that Mike is going to share from either on Shiloh Company Mentorship Facebook page or our website, WesleyStacyCampbell.com. So you can download those notes and follow along with it or go back and see them after the fact. But I I, I just can hardly wait to hear Mike's message today. So Mike, this year started this past year, 2020, and it was prophesied. I mean, it was like an epic year and it started basically with the chiefs going to what the Super Bowl. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, first, <laughs> I was not expecting that question, but first I want to say what a, privilege it is to be with my dear friends, Wesley and Stacey, and we've known each other 30 years plus, been walking together, and I love your heart, I love your spirit, I love this series that, that Shiloh Global is sponsoring, I mean, 30 or 40 sessions, I know you don't have the number locked in yet, 30 or 40 episodes from leaders all over the body of Christ that have a long history in the Lord, imagine 30 or 40 different sessions, different uh looks into this diamond. This diamond has got many facets to it of what the Spirit is saying. And I'm going to share just one little portion. I got like five or ten things I could really emphasize. But I'm going to just take one little angle of that diamond 
that this 30 or 40 episodes in this global, uh, Shiloh Global, I what a gift to the body of Christ. Thank you for doing that. And yes, 2020 started with the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. But you know what? No one really cares out there, but we love it in Kansas City. I'll get right to my notes. <laughs> but the significance was of that was That's right. that Bob had a prophecy from the 80s that when the Chiefs go to the Super Bowl and win, it is a signpost of the great harvest. Just he did. He weeks. said that in the 80s, Bob Jones. The, yeah, he did. Many of you know his name, a prophetic man. I thought it was kind of absurd. I said, what? Because at the time, we had 10 Kansas City Chiefs football players in our church. Wow. So kind of, I mean, 10 of them come into our young adult church from the, from the pro football team. So it seemed kind of a natural, cool thing to say. He said, I'm not talking about these guys. I'm talking about many years. Because the, chief, the, the national football team has been gone. I mean, league has gone 100 years. And we've only won it once. And he said, when you win it again, I thought, whatever. And it was 50 years exactly later. We won it the second time, which was January this year. 50 years. He said, watch what happens wow. across the globe on the year they win. For Jubilee, the 90s and it was and a palindrome. 2020, 2020, yeah. however oh, two, that worked. Oh, two, oh, two. It was so many, not crazy, but unusual <clears throat> things. But I, for 10 or 20 years, people would ask me, I said, I don't really know, but it happened 50 years exactly. Wow. The second time, and it was dramatic and blah, 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 blah. But you know what? We've got so many signs happening in our culture and in the spirit and That's in the it. word. That was a fun one and an important one, too. But but anyway, I'm going to get right into the, the notes I have here. Some just a of you, little bit louder, Mike, just uh, just so I can hear you just a bit clearer. Just okay. bring that thing okay. a bit closer. Thanks. And coach me too, okay? Because I'm in a new Zoom room here, so I'm happy for any kind of input you can give me here. But I, I've got a, a, te a teaching handout. I always, for 30 years, almost always, I give a handout, a one-page notes with all the key verses that I have and the key principles. So you can go to their website that they talked about. You can download it. It's called Why We Value Understanding the Biblical View of the End Time. Hmm. My point is not just why we're interested in it. That's cool. Why we value searching the scripture for, for the clear statement of the Logos. Because a lot of folks, they say, I'm not really into the end time. And I go, well, neither am I. But I'm into Jesus's leadership and the end time storyline in the Bible is actually a statement of his leadership to transition the earth to the age to come. So I said, I'm not into the end time, I'm into Jesus. But if this is his plan, I'm into it. I'm going to search it out. And the part I did not understand, it, this was mind boggling to me. And I have all this on the notes here. There are a hundred and fifty chapters in the Bible. Wow. Of which the primary topic is the generation of the Lord returns. A hundred and fifty chapters. Now you think, okay, that's cool. But think about this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, or gospel, 89 chapters. Wow. So in almost 90 chapters, the narrative of his first coming. A hundred and fifty chapters, almost twice as much as the four gospels, the narrative of his second coming. And it's the same Bible, the same Jesus, the same Holy Spirit. And I want to say this tenderly, not like a hot but most of that 150 chapters, the body of Christ in the earth is illiterate of those chapters. And, and it's been okay, I, I, I believe, up till now, because the Holy Spirit has not emphasized it in a universal way. Pockets have emphasized it, but not universally. But most people who teach on the end time, Pick out the 10 famous chapters, which I, I love, but I got news for you. There's 150, wow. and most of them, you know, stuck in Habakkuk and Isaiah and Jeremiah, but it's about the generation of the Lord. Wow. There is so much information in the Bible on this generation, the positive and the negative. So I've been, I feel the spirit has been stirring me strongly to call people, not to become, quote, Bible experts on all 150 chapters, but to become familiar, at least in a broad strokes way, not with every one of the chapters, but with more than the 10 or 15 famous ones. 
Wow. Because it's Mike, just critical. a quick question. What year did you become interested in this? And, you know, like, how did you get interested in this? Well, I just, it, just actually, speak it, up as loud as you can, because I've got a little tiny speaker and I'm getting old with my ears. Yeah, you are getting old, but there's one problem. I'm older than you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so actually, it was 25 years ago that the Lord spoke in a dramatic way and shifted my attention uh, to this, this topic, that Jesus was returning as bridegroom, king, and judge. And bridegroom, that had been a new emphasis for about five years, starting in 88. The Lord spoke to me about bridegroom God. I was what? I don't care about bridegroom, but he hit it hard. I won't go into the story. We're all familiar a little bit with Jesus, the king, power, miracles, supernatural supply and resources. We, we're kind of familiar with king, but he said bridegroom, king, and judge. And there's no contradiction of Jesus and his personality as a bridegroom, king, or judge. He's a king with power. He's a bridegroom with desire for relationship and intimacy. But he's a judge, get this, to confront and remove everything that hinders love. He has zeal to confront it. And I thought, Jesus, the judge, I don't know much about that. And then the, I'm not going to tell the story because it, it takes 15 minutes, but the Lord, in a very dramatic way, with super, a supernatural way, confirmed it. Start looking for bridegroom, king, and judge, Genesis to Revelation. And I stumbled in our team in Kansas City here at IHOP. We started searching out every chapter, and we were shocked to find 150 chapters. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing. I thought it would have been, you know, 20 chapters, 30. I didn't know because so many of them are in the Old Testament. But, I mean, Isaiah is pretty serious. Yeah, there are about 30 in Isaiah. I didn't know that. I knew there were three or four in Isaiah 40. Everybody knows Isaiah 40, Isaiah 60, Isaiah 61. Okay. I had no idea. So we began to systematically as a team, leadership team, search them out together. And we met several hours a week for like seven years, searching it out and talking wow. and dialoguing. And seven so, years. Yes. And so that's how it started. I mean, it's a much longer story. And now you've story. spent how many years doing this? 25. For the 25, yeah. Wow. But I was much more into Jesus the King. You know, I was Charles Finney, John G. Lake, Miracles, Revival, Third Great Awakening in North America, you know, the greatest revival. I was a Jesus the King guy. So and Revelation 2, 3, what the Spirit is saying to the seven churches, how do you interpret that for today, even for this program? Well, that... I got on my, I, I got Mike Bickle uh, library, mikebickle.org. Yes, it's mikebickle.org. That's it. It's my teaching library. I actually have 2,000 messages, video and handouts. And I've taught on the seven churches of Revelation several series. So that will vex me to give a one sentence answer because I've got a 12 part series that I've done a couple of times. But Revelation 2 and 3 is critical. Yes, it's really critical. But the topic I want to point out is, there is this incredible amount of information in the Bible on, on the narrative, Jesus' leadership and the generation he returns. There are, I'm just making up the number, 10 or 12 really negative categories of things that are going to happen. But the devil's involved in, in, in some of them for sure in man's sin. But God, as the master of, of the narrative, is allowing evil to increase, to escalate. Then there's 10 or 12 big categories of positive the greatest revival in the history of of the human race is going to happen so the greatest revival and the greatest darkness are going to happen simultaneously in one generation and it's going wow. to create it's going to create dynamics never been navigated before in human history and there's never been a generation where they saw the most intense darkness and the most intense revival happening simultaneously when there's what eight or nine or ten billion people on that's the right planet. i mean it is going to be the greatest revival but it's going to be the greatest attack of the enemy against the human race but the greatest victory and turnaround but it's See, i just want to I, I just want to emphasize that right now because many people either fall on one side or the other side of that dynamic where there's emphasizing all the negative things that are going to happen 
or they're emphasizing all the positive things. Mm. But you bring out that both things are going to be happening at the same time because you've studied every verse, all the verses, all the chapters of the generation of the Lord's return. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm right or I got that much insight, but I have. Matter of fact, I took three years at IHOP here. I just finished last week, actually, and took the 150 chapters over three years. It's six 15-week semesters, actually, which is 90. And in 90 Wednesday nights, I covered all 150 chapters, like wow. some chapter, some Wednesday nights, two chapters in one night. I did verse by verse, line by line. I gave the context, the partial fulfillment in history, the future fulfillment. And we went through all 150 chapters. It took us three years. 500 people did this with me every Wednesday night. Wow. Amazing. I gave a teaching. We had small group discussions. We had meals together. Our, our small group did. Then I gave a QA. and a And I finished it literally in December, just now finished it. And so it's been the three years of like, I mean, it was kind of exhilarating, but kind of like three years, 90 weeks, Wednesdays. And so I got six to 10 pages of notes on every one of those chapters. And they're right on our website. People can get them because our copyrights, the right to copy. People can have them free. You know, I just want to throw them to the wind. Do with them what you want to do with them, but do something with them. <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm not claiming I, I understand it the best or the most or anything. We're all, We're learners. We need to learn from the whole body of Christ. There's things that we don't have right, but we're staying in a posture of learning from other ministries. And we want to, we believe in this next 10 and 20 years. I mean, even now there's going to be an accelerated dialogue in the body of Christ around these 150 chapters. Again, everyone doesn't have to master all 150. Everyone doesn't have to do 90 Wednesday nights. I mean, it took me three hours every Wednesday night to do this with teaching Q and A and small groups, actually more than three hours, but, but that's, that's not the point, but all those notes are there. And so I walked away stunned about how much I did not know before this three years, how much I need to learn still, how much information's in the Bible. And I thought, when did that get in the Bible? You know, <laughs> the Lord could say, hey, I said that a long time ago. So, you know, you know, we've come through the most, you know, historic year in the history of mankind because of technology, the interconnectedness, the whole world, and we've actually had a worldwide shutdown, lockdown, churches aren't gathering, COVID-19, I mean, millions, the fear is raging, and, uh, you know, have, have you seen these kind of things in the Bible about what the Spirit has been saying to the church? Yeah, yes, you, we, of course, I would be exaggerating to say I saw it this year as covid but yes, these kind of negative and positive, because all of these things have a two dimensions to it. And I like what Stacy said. Some groups only say the positive, which I love that. But if you have the positive without the negative and the negative happens, you'll be disillusioned. You'll be tempted to offense towards the Lord saying, wait, wait, no one told me this. When, who's telling me the truth? But if you only tell the negative without the positive, people will just sink. It's the greatest hour of human history. Wow. But in the flesh, it will be the most challenging hour of human history. But in the spirit, it will be the most dynamic hour for people who love Jesus and leadership. Mike, why don't you give us a few elements of, you know, all these three years of study? I, I feel like so privileged. I didn't know that we're the culmination. We're one of the first people to get a, a one hour message out to the world on three years of cumulative study on both the negative and the positive. And what are the salient points of what the spirit is saying to the church in this new era that we're moving into from since COVID from the Bible? I would like to not answer that this moment, but in a minute okay. with your permission, yeah. sure. I want to give five quick reasons why it's critical to study this. Because once somebody commits to study it, they can catch all the nuances and the details. But until we go, huh, this is in the Bible, and I got to get my Bible and start looking, that's what I want to win people to right now. Mm. Not as much the details. We got lots of them are there, but more like, oh, my goodness. I know those 10 famous chapters. I didn't know there's 140 more I didn't even think about. I want to sell people to the idea that God has generously given this information 
He's given more information to one generation of human history for a reason. And it's not okay for the body of Christ to go the next 10 years or the next 20 years unaware of this critically important information. And so I'm giving more of a broad strokes of why to dig this, because I believe in this 30 or 40 episodes of the Shiloh Global, so many parts of that diamond are going to be looked at. And anybody who wants to know my stuff, they look at my website. Again, the last three years, I've been all 90, all the 150 chapters, but I've been teaching on it for 25 years. So I got mm. probably 40 series on the end times, 40 series. I don't really know the real number on intimacy, power of God, prophetic ministry, end time harvest. I just love those topics. I just, I love them all, you know, and so... <laughs> I'm going to give you reason number one why it's critical, I believe, even starting now. And now it's not too late. I think if we get people hooked up to this in the next year, two or three, they'll be on time with biblical information. Number one reason, I call it the unique, dyna di the unique dynamics. Isaiah 60, I got it right here on the notes and on your website. And again, the, the handout is why we value studying the biblical view. And, and all those, I won't go through much of that, but it's on the website. You can look at later. Next. Number one, Isaiah 60 talks the famous verse that says, when deep darkness covers the earth, so the glory of God will rise on the people of God. Right there on the screen there, Isaiah 60, when deep darkness happens the same time, the glory is manifest. And so this is going to create unique dynamics never navigated before in human history. And because it's so unique, and the early apostles did not navigate these dynamics, that's one reason why we want to know the biblical overview, because it's, there's never been a time in history this dramatic, with so much positive and so much negative going on at the same time. The second reason we need to study it, is I've already mentioned it, so I'm going to say much more about it. There's 150 chapters in the written word of God that are giving the details, not all the details, of one generation history. There is more information in the Bible on one generation than many other generations all added up together. Why? Why? Because the heart of God is a shepherd, Jesus, the shepherd. He said, you're going to need that information. The very fact there's 150 chapters on one generation mm. ought to make us go, you're kidding me. Really? Why did he give that much information? And of course, the short answer is the body of Christ would need it. That's right. Because to navigate it. That's right. Now, now people could go on YouTube and just type in the 150 chapters and you'll get all the lists. You'll get a summary of them. I've got notes on them before on YouTube, but the 150 chapters, you can get them all right there. And, and again, don't feel like you got to master them in the next 12 months. That's a little intense, but <laughs> Go on a pace, say, hey, in the next three, four, five years, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to inch forward on these topics. So the second reason is because there's so much in the Bible on it. The third reason, and this is the one maybe I care the most about, I call it a pastoral reason. The, the which? The pastoral, pastoral reason. reason. They, so, so there's the first reason is the most unique time in history. The second reason, there's more in the Bible on that generation than any time in history. The third is pastoral. What do I mean by that? Many across, I mean, millions will look at the escalating darkness and it will look like the train of history is off the track and nobody's leading it. Where is this going? Does anyone have answers? That's what well, the good news right is, now. There's one reliable source of answers. It's the written word of God. Wow. It's not even the preachers. It's the written word of God is the one reliable source hundreds of millions in the body of Christ. They're looking going, what? What is this? Nobody's troubled by the, by the release of blessing. It's the escalating darkness that troubles them. Jesus, here's the pastor. Now. Jesus gave four, these are, this is Jesus now, not me. Four negative responses that he said, was saying, I'll say to my words, oh, my beloved church, don't fall prey to these four negative responses. He said that 2,000 years ago for this hour of history. Like, what? How kind of him to do that. The first one, and I have a, not, a little acronym, and the acronym is F-O-L-V. Say that again. I had to work on the acronym, FOLD. 
In other words, stand, don't fall. But fall didn't work, so I made it fold. Fold. <laughs> fold. Don't fold. Don't cave in. Now, if we don't know the biblical narrative of what's happening, that there is a leader guiding this, allowing a number of a number of the negative, using it, even the devil's rage, rebounding it for the transformation of the end time church and the global harvest. Even the devil's raging, Jesus is going to rebound it back to the transformation of this church and the billion soul harvest. So if you don't know there's a leader of history who knows all the details, from the beginning, he knew the end time details, all of them. He says, I got this thing under control. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. Let me give you the four negative responses. He warned us. Because if we don't know the biblical narrative, we here's the key. We will by default fault as believers take the secular narrative if we don't know the biblical narrative we'll take the secular one we'll take what all of the they're saying on the internet and everywhere this is what's happening and it will look really gloomy if you're not rooted in biblical revelation number one fear jesus said in luke 21 wow. we all know the verse men will faint for fear many believers will faint for fear because they won't make sense of it it, it, they'll go, where's this thing going? And Jesus is like, you don't have to if you know that I'm leaving it. I gave you the details ahead of time. Look at this. The number two now, negative. Just, just pause on that for a sec. Right now, we have an epidemic, a pandemic of fear. I, when he says that, I mean, have you ever seen fear like this in the earth? Yeah, and especially amongst the younger generation. they, uh, The people that don't know the Bible, and uh, then they're the most afraid because they feel like things are going to get worse and worse. The economy is going to get worse. The world is getting worse. The environment's getting worse. So this is so unique, the way you've connected the bridegroom, the king, and the judge together. It's one reality one God leading us through all these things and no and contradiction in his exactly. personality. At all. And at the end, we have to pray about this fear because fear right now is crippling uh the church, you know, the church. It, this is the year of the mouth. This is the year of the mouth. 2020, Chuck Pierce stood in, he says it's the year of the mouth. And interesting that the enemy of our souls, the real literal de you know, devil. He's brought about sickness and covered the mouth of the entire world. Amazing. No, that's true. But the fear is going to intensify among people that are not aware of Jesus and his leadership. And you can grow up in the church and love Jesus and cry when you worship, but not be equipped to understand what's happening. And the, the second uh, negative response is offense. That's in Matthew 24. And I got all the notes right there. And, and he said, many will be offended. Now, we know where people will be offended one towards another. But I'll tell you something more serious. People are going to be believers offended at Jesus' leadership. They're going to say, my church didn't taught me this would not happen. My church taught me we would never see this. Are the teachers in the Bible, are the Bible teachers of my generation, are they liars? Is the Bible not true? Is God not a God of love? an offense at God for allowing the negative to increase is going to be a huge point of vulnerability for the church in this hour. You know, Mike, they, they had this actually <coughs> happen in China because they taught uh, a rapture in the, the church in China, at, at the, you know, which is part of the, uh, cultural purge. the cultural, before the cultural purges. And then the cultural purges came and it was so intense against the church in China that uh, they had uh, about a million people, but hundreds of thousands fell away till it was at a remnant. And then they read the rest of the Bible, like you're saying. And the core group that read the rest of the Bible actually got strengthened in the mm. Lord. They got faith for the future mm. and hope, and the church just exploded. Millions so this were is, martyred. Millions. millions were martyred, but uh, they, they became stronger at, at, when they realized the whole of Scripture. So that is a huge huge point we've seen this fit, happen. If we don't have the biblical narrative we it's not like automatically we'll be offended but we're so much more vulnerable to fear and offense and and i'm 65 years old and the 20 somethings i am impassioned about training them on the 150 chapter narrative of the bible so mm -hmm. they go okay we saw these 
I don't know the exact number, but the 10 big categories of negative, but we see the 10 categories of positive. That's just a hypothetical number. You can make the categories any kind of number you want to actually. There's so many details. And they go, oh, oh, they're both happening, but the end of the story is glorious. And this is why it's happening. Oh my goodness. I wish they would have told me that before the darkness escalated. The third negative, F is fear, O is offense, L. Now, this one I had to kind of reach to make the acronym work. I'm just saying it. <laughs> it's the word, it's L for lust. And in Luke 21, verse 34 and 35, Jesus said, be careful because immorality and drunkenness, he gave a few others, will overtake your heart in that day if you're not watching your heart. And the reason there's going to be an explosion of immorality and drunkenness and 10 other things. Because, well, some because people love sin, but forget that right now. That, that's not my point right now. People will be self-medicating in immorality, drunkenness, opioids, drugs to escape pain. And so- Do What? I couldn't hear you. Escape, escape pain. pain. They will be self-medicating, meaning people love immorality for other reasons, but they'll be going, I got to get some escape. And Jesus actually warned them of finding that escape in the hour when all these things are happening. So I'm using the word L lust, meaning we will people will be far more vulnerable to escape through momentary pleasure when fear and offense grabs their heart and everything around them seems different than they thought it was going to happen. Wow. Then the fourth negative, F-O-L-D, is deception. Matthew 24 again. And again, I got all the verses on the notes. Jesus said, this is really alerting. He said, many, he used the word many twice in one verse. I think it's the only verse in the Bible where many is used twice about two different subjects in one verse. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's the only one. It's the only one I've ever seen. Jesus said, many, that's millions, mm. will false prophets, many false prophets will receive many. Now, when people think of false prophets, they sometimes think of some guy with horns on, with shifty eyes, you know, ah, false prophets. <laughs> and probably there'll be a few of those guys around undoubtedly, but that's not who I'm thinking about. False prophets are social commentators that are giving the secular narrative of what's wow. the biblical one. Wow. And those what social did, commentators, they're really <laughs> cool. They're gifted. They're good looking. They got great social media platforms. And many of them are coming out of the churches. They're based in churches. They're giving a social commentary, a false one that does not agree with the biblical narrative and setting people up for wrong expectations to be deceived and duped, to believe wrong things, to accept wrong things. The deception is, is terrifying because many of them, they're looking for just feeling good, so they'll take whatever narrative makes them feel good, almost like the lust and the drugs and all that stuff. So F-O-L-D, Jesus gave those four negatives, for, obviously for every generation. He was talking, he said one generation particularly will be more vulnerable, I'm adding these words, than any other generation, hmm. because they, will, they don't know how to navigate what's going on, navigate it, but I've already put it all in the book right there. Wow. Let me give you another reason why to study it. This one is really interesting. I think on page two. Just, just before you say that though, like, you know, I am shocked. I, I'm seeing this, we've never seen before. <clears throat> so many of these young uh, millennials are believing so many of these false doctrines. It's all over the internet. I mean, they want church without a God. They yeah. want church without a Bible. They actually just want the feel-good feeling of, you know, the community and being together and caring about one another. And it's almost a different, uh, like, I've, I've, it's a different message than we've ever heard before. Yeah, it's a secular narrative with biblical language, because you can use justice, mercy, love, honor, community, but using <clears throat> biblical words, but not a biblical definition of those words. And, and the social commentators, they're not being, many of them are not deceiving on purpose. They are themselves unaware of the biblical narrative, even though they're preachers. And so this is very, very important. Now I can say this, you guys can't say it, but I can. I call it the gospel of the American dream. That's a false gospel. There's an apostolic gospel and there's an American dream, the American dream gospel. And I'm telling you that 
gospel will not empower our heart to thrive when things are negative. But the apostolic gospel can empower us to thrive. I mean, to be vibrant in the spirit and even in kingdom community, even in the place of negativity around our culture. But the American gospel, it's the American dream that, you know, I've apologized on Zoom calls a number of my go. We have had a great missionary movement out of America over the last 100, 200 years. And I love that. So we, in the last 100 years, I don't know the exact time. We have shipped the gospel, the American dream, and we've polluted nations all over the world and set them up for this false expectation. And mm. I said, oh, forgive us for exporting this gospel to the earth. I'm grateful for the others. And I don't have time to talk about them, but I love the true stuff that's going on. But this secular narrative, it's coming out of the mouth of preachers and social media, and it's cool, that instant kind of gratification of, Wow, that makes me feel better. I go, feel better is good, but even better is equipped according to truth. Exactly, because when you know what is coming, when you know the days that are ahead of us, you become prepared in your inner man. And, you know, Wesley and I have traveled all over the world. And sometimes I would come back to North America or the Western world. And the things that I heard preached from pulpits wouldn't actually equip anybody in some of the countries, the poor countries, the persecuted countries that I was in, and the gospel wouldn't fit there. And if it's the Bible, it has to equip the whole church from any country in any context. Mm -hmm. So I love this, what you're saying. Yeah, catch this reason here. I'll give two more real fast, and I know we're at the very end. And again, I got a ton of this on my website, mikebickle.org, and so we don't have to do it all one session. And and go to YouTube and look up the 150 chapters, and there's a bunch there as well. But this is an interesting one that I did not know this one until just a few years ago. That in Matthew chapter 24, I call it the fourth reason, it's prophetic reason. Jesus says this most unusual thing in Matthew 24. He said, verse 33, I'm reading it. When you see all these things, okay, he's talking about the 22 signs in Matthew 24. When you see all these things, here it is know that the time is near and that generation won't pass. Wow. Did you know there's one generation that is commanded to know they're in that generation when they're in it? Mm. Wow. Verse 36, he said, you won't know the day, the hour, but if you're in that generation, I've given you biblical signs. I've given you 150 chapters. The Old Testament prophets have given signs at the time. The apostles gave signs at the time. Jesus gave 22 signs at the time. I've taught several series on the signs of the times. There's Old Testament, New Testament, apostles, Jesus. is about 50. Jesus said, generation, in your life, I gave you 150 chapters and maybe 50 biblical signs of the time. I want you to know you're in that generation. Mm. And a lot of folks quote verse 36. I'm on verse 34. They say, nobody can know the day of the hour. But they take that to say that nobody can know the generation. I go, actually, it's opposite. Now, here's the situation. Every one of the signs are not being fulfilled right now. So we can't know with certainty, but here's another observation. Almost all of the signs are increasing on a global level for the first time in history together, almost every one of them. And be, But if you ask the average believer, give me the top 15 signs of the times that you're paying attention to. They'll say wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, famine, you know, that stuff. They can name five. I don't know if the numbers are actually 50 because there's different ways to categorize it. But the average believer is not familiar with the storyline of the 150 chapters. They're not familiar with the 50, I don't know the exact number, prophetic signs of the time. How will they know in that hour? But Jesus actually commanded us to in verse 34 of Matthew 24. But verse 36 says you can't know the day, the hour. Those are two separate discussions. Many put them together. And they go, well, I'm really into the end times. I go, well, neither, I, was, I said this earlier, and I know we're coming to an end here. <clears throat> I said, believe it or not, neither am I. I'm into Jesus' leadership. I'm obsessed. Say that again. I couldn't hear that. He's into I'm Jesus. into Jesus' leadership. I'm obsessed with Jesus, not the end times. <laughs> if he says these things, I'm in. If he doesn't say them, I don't care. Because people ask me all the time, man, you're really into the end times. I go, wrong. I'm into loving Jesus. <laughs> I'm into his excellent leadership. So that he tells us in Matthew 24, when you see all of them, and it's not true to say all of them 
are escalating, but almost all of them are for the first time yes. on a global level. I mean, it's alarming, alerting, not alarm, alerting. I'm going, whoa, I have incredible urgency. I want to get the next generation ready so they're not afraid and taken by surprise. Now, I'll give you the fifth thing. This is a great one. And the fifth one in Daniel chapter 11, it's on page two of the notes. This mighty angel visits Daniel. This is awesome. This mighty angel visits Daniel. And Daniel 11, which is one of the most important end time chapters of the Old Testament. And this angel says, Daniel. And he's talking about in the, the generation the Lord returns. He goes, the people of understanding will teach many in that day. And he wasn't talking about general Bible understanding. That's the book of Proverbs. We, I love that. I love biblical understanding. He meant understanding of the biblical end time narrative. He goes, the people of understanding will teach many. And when an angel says they'll teach many, I got good news for you. There will be hundreds of millions of people wanting to know the answer from the Bible. Wow. I mean, I tell young preachers, if you want to know where the law supply and demand, you want to know what people here will know through here. I promise to you that my angel said many. That's probably a billion or two. Unbelievers are just as interested in the biblical narrative, many of them as believers are. Yes, Some they are. People, they want to know what the Bible says. And there's a people of understanding. It's not a group here or a group there. I'm asking the Lord, I don't have a real number from the Spirit. I'm saying, Lord, raise up a million messengers in the earth. Now, a million yeah. sounds like a lot, but a million out of a billion of the harvest, that's one hundredth of one percent or something like that. I mean, it's barely a tenth of one percent. Yeah, I think, Mike, you know, you're a real forerunner in bringing out these biblical truths. And even Daniel said in Daniel chapter 12, 12, seal up these things till the end of time. And then he qualifies that time when men go to and fro across the earth and knowledge is on the increase. And we are moving into this explosion of knowledge. But they, I believe God himself will highlight these things so that we can be ready. But it is so critical that we know it. So my, that is, because Daniel 12 and Daniel 11 is the same vision. So yeah, we're on, you're about 10 verses down the road, but same vision. You're exactly right. I love it. Mm. That's like really into Daniel 12, verse four. I mean, that you said it exactly right. <laughs> But this fifth reason, and I'm going to say I'm rapid fire, and then we'll, then we'll pray and stuff. But this angel says, Daniel, the people of understanding, they will teach many. And then Jeremiah says in the last days, I got the verse written down there, that God will get, he said, the, the New King James says they will understand it perfectly. Perfectly wow. sounds intense. I use the word mature. There will be mature understanding. Here's the point I'm making. We're in the hour of history where the Spirit's going to give a heightened increase by those 150 chapters. Wow. It's not new truth, old truth with a new in. Whoa! Like I've said a hundred times in the last three years, I've brought these 90 chapters. I go, when did that get in the Bible? Whoa, I've never seen that. Most of it I've never seen. So, number one reason why we need to study it, it's the most unique time in human history never navigated before. Number two reason, there were 150 chapters on one generation in the Bible. Number three gen, uh, reason, possible reason, Jesus said, if you don't, are not anchored with in this, you'll be far more vulnerable to fear, offense, lust, and deception. Number four reason, prophetic. Know you're in that generation if you're actually in it through the biblical signs of the times in the 150 chapters. Number five, good news, increased understanding by the Spirit is coming in that hour of history. Beloved, this is the hour to move into it. Amen. Oh, Amen. that's awesome, Mike. You packed so much in there, I can't believe it. Now, listen, <clears throat> the big thing that we just mentioned, we've come out of a year that has never been like this year before, and still the fear in the earth right now is palpable. Is palpable. It's, it's, it's over the top. Families wouldn't even meet with each other for Christmas. I mean, it's crazy. Thanksgiving. And now we're into 2020. <clears throat> 21. We're 2021, pardon me. <laughs> Thank you. And we're hearing about, you know, pastors being uh, um, arrested. They're being charged for gathering. They're being, um, they, you know, and there's a, there's, a, there's a fear. And I know you worked with the Chinese church. And um, right. they said the first thing they had to conquer was the fear barrier. So I want, uh, Stacy, why don't you just 
you know, what do you have to say to people that are going well, through this? Yeah, I, I feel it is so important not to fall into fear. And really, Mike has given us a, a great charge to study the Bible. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The greatest way to combat fear is to get deep into the word of God, to, uh, to get into the scriptures, to study it all out so that you know what is coming and you know the days that are ahead of you and you get your heart prepared above all things. And uh, anyway, I think that fear is really, really um, dangerous, but also there is fear immobilizes us so that we do nothing. We don't actually proactively look into the future and not only prepare our hearts, but prepare um, uh, prepare containers, create containers for this new era, for this new time that we're in. And so I'm so delighted that we started with biblical truth because we can't add anything to the Bible, but neither can we take anything out of the Bible. There's great uh, judgments for adding to scripture or taking out of the words of the prophecy of this book, it says in Revelation. And so uh, to get a holistic view is your greatest defense and armament and uh, faith building thing that you can get for the future so that you become a light of the world, of the world you're in. You're the hope bearer. You're the faith bringer. Yeah. You're the one that's providing solutions and you're actually giving um even tangible help for people in the future. So God wants you deep in the word of God. So anyway, uh, why don't you just- uh, Mike, why don't you pray for our uh, all the yes. audience that are tuning in from everywhere. They're on Facebook, they're on Instagram TV, they're on YouTube. Um, Charisma podcast. Charisma podcast, everywhere. Just go ahead. And yes, I will. I got two year. prayers. And the first one is for this. Again, if a billion so harvest, a million people who go deep on these 150 chapters, that's only a one-tenth of one percent. And everyone doesn't need to go deep on it. Everyone needs to have broad strokes understanding. Not, but if a million go deep, and Wesley and Stacy, the people that follow you are people that want to go deep as prophetic messengers. So I'm going to pray that the hundreds, I don't know what is the number, thousands of messengers literally in this broadcast, in this series, they would determine, you know, I can't learn it all in a day. I'm going to take the next three, four, five years. I'm going to start systematically going through these 150 chapters. And I'm going to teach my area of the body of Christ some things they're not expecting. So, Lord, I pray, Daniel 11, 33. Yeah. You told the mighty angel, the people of understanding in the last days, they will teach millions. Or you said many, but millions and millions. I ask for a spirit of boldness. Yeah. A spirit of revelation, a spirit of hunger. I ask to come on faithful witnesses, messengers in the end times with such a clear message that it overcomes fear and offense and deception, etc. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over fear that's rooted in the secular narrative, even in the church, because your leadership is perfect, Jesus, and we have no reason to be a fear. Your leadership is perfect in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So again, we want to tell you all, please visit Mike Bickle at MikeBickle.org, IHOPKC.org. Uh, there is thousands of messages there. All these notes are there. The series that he alluded to, they're all there. And again, check out our website, WesleyStacyCampbell.com and get Stacy's app. I mean, there's so many more messages that you're going to hear concerning uh, and this And even messages on, on teaching you how to pray the Bible, how actually to meditate on scripture. They're all on the free Shiloh Global app. You can download it and listen <clears throat> to those messages so you <clears throat> learn how to go deep in God. But anyway, we're going to just uh, pause the recording here. But Mike is going to stay on to talk to my Shiloh company. They have some questions and answers. And uh, we just want to encourage you. This is the first of our series of what the Spirit is saying to the church Tune in next week and we have Wait, uh, one more quickie. One more quickie. You are Stacy leading this mentoring group. I want to encourage people. This is gold. Get in that mentoring group. Yeah. And there's gonna be 30 or 40 episodes on this. This is what the spirit is saying. Because, like I said, it's a diamond with many facets. I only hit one little facet. Yeah. They'll all hit different facets. And we'll be looking at it like whoa. So get mentored. 
What a golden opportunity. Thank you, Stacy, for doing this. No, no problem. We are delighted to do it. And I just want people to hear, you know, the voice of God for themselves, to understand the word of God, but also to have Rhema encouragement for this hour. So we have Chuck Pierce coming up, Cindy Jacobs coming up, James Gall coming up, uh, hopefully Chris Valentin coming up, many, many apostolic leaders as well as prophetic voices. And like Mike said, everybody carries a, a piece of it. And when we put all the pieces together, we get the bigger picture of what's going on. We all prophesy in part, but the Bible is the whole thing. So that's what you really have to study. So God bless you all and uh, look we'll forward to week. seeing you next week.